Hello, dear viewers. Who is ready to hear about a man of two worlds? A man who embodies the heyday of science fiction. Someone who does everything he does for love. Well, because today, I'm going to tell you all about Adam Strange, a man of Earth, but the protector of Ram. I'm Andrew Lapamardo, your narrator, and this is Marvelous Videos. It does not take much for a comic book buff to hear about the Silver Age and immediately mention words like science fiction, cosmic rays, and jetpacks. It was a start, and a glorious one at that, for heroes like Adam Strange. The description of a space ranger fitting him like a glove. The DC Universe has several stories worth remembering, and Adam plays quite a significant part in them. The protagonist energy is indeed quite strong here. All those years back in 1958, Adam was made so moldable that he fit into every plot arc. When writers needed to give readers a human perspective on intergalactic troubles, Adam was tailor-made for it and the perfect candidate available. In this long journey, the extraordinary character has gone on to grow and drape himself around complex tales, and for those who know, they know there's more to him than meets the eye at first glance. So, we spare him that today, just as he deserves. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Adam Strange, the first comic appearance in Origin. The Silver Age of Comics gave us quite a few notable names, worth being etched in memory. Much like Green Lantern and Flash, Adam Strange had words to say and things to do, and he did them beautifully, impactfully. He was that sci-fi hero who deserved more moments of glory. So we're doing our bit today. Created in 1958, Adam Strange met us in issue 17 of Showcase. The story around and about him was extensively built through issues 18 and 19 following it. Issue 17 carried two stories under the same banner of Adventures on Other Worlds. The first one was called Secret of the Eternal City, and the second one was The Planet and the Pendulum. Both of these stories starred Adam Strange in a space trouble scenario, and the plot was thick. In the country of Karamanga in South America, there lived a young archaeologist who went by the name of Adam Strange. In one instance, he came across a hostile tribe of Inca villagers who began chasing him and Adam ran for his life. He did manage to evade them, but was then struck by what was shown as a beam of energy. This Zeta Beam helped him teleport through space some 25 trillion miles away to the planet Ram. Seeking answers, as he should, Adam met a scientist on the planet who called himself Sardoth. Sardoth informed Adam of the true nature of the beam, intended to have been a ray for communication. More precisely, a ray for communication gone wrong because of radiation, giving it the characteristic of teleportation. To his relief, Sardoth tells him that the effects of the beam on him are temporary in nature. He should be able to return to his home planet as soon as the effects wear off. More relaxed now, Adam introduced himself to Sardoth's daughter Alana, learnt some of Ran's native language, Ranian, and familiarized himself with the violent past that Ran had seen. Unfortunately for him and the rest of Ran, he did not have to wait for long to see hints of that violence in person. Ran was invaded by another race of aliens who called themselves the Eternals, searching for Vitatron, a rare mineral they believed Ran possessed. Alana and Adam decided to engage in their quest to ensure that peace prevailed on Ran again. As they traveled to Kamoric, city-state nearby to get more information on the whole incident, they not only came across the Eternals, but it also dawned upon Alana that Vitatron was possibly found in another city called Samarkand. The problem, Samarkand, was a truly mythical city emerging only once in every 25 Iranian years. They managed to reach Samakan and consulted scientists there, wanting to get to know more about Vitatron and why it was being sought after. The clever duo led the Eternals straight into a trap set for them, though, where the scientists of Samakan, far more advanced with their technology against invaders and the like, apprehend the rowdy alien beings and bound them to a prison with fourth dimensional characteristics. As was fated, the effects of the Zeta Beam wore off and Adam returned to Earth. But the fondness of Ran encapsulated his heart and never left. So he decided to dedicate time and effort 
so as to anticipate and apprehend the exact time that that beam would strike the Earth again, wishing for nothing more than to return to Ran and its residence. Adam began calculating the days until then. However, that next bit about the return does not go quite as planned. A successful tracing and interception of the next Zeta Beam strike later, Adam teleports again to Ran. However, he ends up amongst the barbaric native tribe, Zora, from the region Vardana. They get a hold of Adam and transferred him to the Tower of Rainbow Doom as a captive, and he was eventually sent to Anathran, the sister world of Ran. Adam's survival instincts kicked in and he began exploring the area he was left in. Coming across the disabled space vessel with recognition marks of Ran, he ventured inside. There he met Sardoth and Alana again, inquiring about the vessel being there as it was. They told him that the Samakan scientist had let them acquire the advanced technology which they used to make the space travel vessel, but they were shot down by an alien race from another land, Maureen. Their initial mission was to find evidence of a lost ancient Ranian colony. With Adam by their side, they discovered that this lost colony was actually located in the midst of another city, New Rangar, that was protected by a dome. The trio managed to reach and establish contact with one of New Rangar's denizens, but to their dismay, the Maureen invaders launched an attack once again. This time, the invaders attempted to damage the protective dome around the city with a large pendulum with sharp spikes. As the dome was being struck at with an intention to slice and damage it, Adam mustered up all his courage. He borrowed a jetpack and a ray gun from Sardoth's space vessel and determined to not let his beloved planet and people see such destruction. As people watched, Adam projected himself to intercept the Maureens and destroy the pendulum before it could cause more damage than it already had. This move drove the invaders away a second time, far away from Anathurin, leaving that world slightly shaken up, but peaceful again. This tale too ends with the Zeta Beam effects wearing off and Adam Strange found himself in Earth's cradle again. Amidst his own people, he craved to be on Ran with Alano once more, who he seemed to have grown fond of. Adam Strange, Other Appearances Adam Strange's character made his mark in the live-action universe with the TV series Krypton, recurringly appearing throughout the two seasons and being there since the pilot episode aired. His character arc was slightly altered herein, and he remained an archaeologist, albeit a failed one and a college dropout at that. He was part of Krypton's future, traveling to the past to meet one Sagal, and warn him about the threat to Krypton that was incoming. Adam insisted that if Sigel did not pay heed, his grandson Kal-El, aka Superman, would never come to be, and that would be or do no good for the world. The story opens with Sigel's absolute disbelief of Adam, even after Adam gave him a sunstone. This sunstone was embedded with a slightly altered crest of the House of El, and with that gift, Adam beseeched Segal to look for the Fortress of Solitude. Then, as suddenly as he had shown up with a catastrophe of a news, Adam Strange disappeared from Segal's sight. Unbeknownst to the reader until then, his disappeared form had actually met Sardath and Alana and managed to convince them before he returned to his error of Krypton. Segal, on the other hand, managed to find the fortress. Adam met him there again pleased that Sigel had believed him and found the place he had requested him to. As miffed as he was at the death of his parents, Adam Strange presented Sigel with Superman's cape. He pointedly told Sigel that the cape was slowly being removed from existence. He may end up being the last one of his family. Only he could stop that from happening though. And for that, he needed to believe the truth of an alien invasion from the future. Seg thereby learnt of Brainiac, nicknamed the Collector of Worlds. The plot thickens until it thins out to reveal a beautiful story, giving us a goosebump inducing ride through the episodes and seasons. One of the 1950s most beloved superheroes, he makes himself known in the live action form too, all for those who find that medium more enticing. In another instance, there is a DC showcase, an animated short that any fan of the character should not miss. This is a tale of a colony that mines asteroids, and a drunkard that is looked down upon by the hardworking people. One of their workdays does not quite come to be so usual, 
as they manage to open a crevasse quite roughly and deadly alien insects come flying out of it. It is at this point where the town's drunks, true identity is laid open for all to see. Space adventurer Adam Strange has to now save people who have never made him feel welcome or appreciated and have only had feelings of disdain for him. The history of this hero comes out frame by frame as Adam Strange becomes the hero who must battle not only the insects out in the open about to devour him but also the feelings inside of him attempting quite the same thing. Adam Strange, what makes him extra special? The Zeta Beam had had some damaging effects on Adam Strange's normal vision, and he lost his eyes. Sardith then used Alana as a template donor and made new eyes for Adam, giving him enhanced vision. This ability enabled him to see more details than human eyes were generally capable of, to the extent that the augmentation meant he had natural electromagnetic spectrum vision, to the full extent and an idiac memory. Adam was extensively trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and aerial combat, exhibited in his battle with humanoid species Hawkmen of Thangaria, who he took down with his bare hands, and his capacity to operate the jetpack as well as he does when needed. He made use of his skills to learn the use of Rainian firearms, and came to be known as an expert sharpshooter. Adam has a sharp mind too, enhanced by his vast knowledge of archaeology and experiences with aliens of different kinds. As a tactician, he can strategize well. He is also a brave explorer, mathematician par excellence, and above all, knows how and where to use his knowledge. His weakness lies in the little detail of the planet he loves to be on. He was known to not be able to survive on Ran for more than a year at a stretch. Adam Strange was also known to possess a Zeta Beam module, essentially a compression of Ran's Zeta Beam device. This drone could be filled in with the exact coordinates of Adam's desired destination, and it would assist him to reach there. He also had one of the most impressive physical appearances, a head protected by helmet-like gear and an insulated costume that was non-flammable. The helmet in question had a shield to counter the harsh unearthly atmospheric conditions, alongside being equipped with heads-up display. Adam was capable to the point where, during his stint on Justice League of America, he once managed to imprison the entire Justice League on Ran, when they reached their accidental credits to the Zeta Beam again. Issue 20 of JLA saw Adam insist upon the heroes to assist him in rebuilding the damaged capital city of Ran. Adam Strange, closing in. Editor Julius Schwartz went on record to say that he wanted that line of divide between Adam and the space opera of sorts that Flash Gordon was. Hence, Adam was based more on the fundamental facts in sci-fi and won his battles against his enemies by making good use of scientific principles to suit his needs. If it was even at all slightly fiddled with at times, no one had to know because of the seamless way in which it was blended into the story being told. Earlier on with Adam Strange, stories like Diamdium were pure fiction, of course. But it is noteworthy that Strange's early appearances frequently contained backup pieces that explored the actual science behind various astronomy-based themes discussed in the adventures preceding it. If Pulp Hero forefathers from books are anything to go by, they have never let us have a dearth of superheroes to talk about. Adam Strange, too, owes his essence to one Arnold Lute, a creation of Edwin Lester. The stories of American men in the military traveling to other worlds, developing feelings for alien princesses. Very much the storyline of Edgar Rice Burroughs' A Princess of Mars, and a couple of others too. The most significant and direct influence probably came from a long-running Flash Gordon comic strip. With all the characters of this story, All-American Flash, scientist Hans Zarkov, and his daughter, and Flash's girl friend Dale Ardeen. We see some Cinderella's shoes here, and these shoes would undoubtedly fit the characters we have talked about so far. So long. Allow us to give you a piece of brownie here. Adam was, at one point, the name suggested by Flash for incorporation into the roster of the Justice League. How? What? Where? We will leave that for you to find out. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.